Hello everyone. I'm Dr. Monica Sujit Saman. Today we will discuss the introductory part of fuel. Chemical fuel is a combustible material which on a proper burning in air gives large amount of heat that can be used economically for domestic and industrial purpose. Examples of fuel, wood, charcoal, coal, kerosene, petrol, diesel, producer gas, water gas, natural gas. During the process of combustion, carbon and hydrogen of the fuel combine with oxygen of air to form CO2 and H2 respectively. Since the heat of content of combustion product being lower than that of reactants, the chemical fuel release heat during their combustion process. Now, the classification of fuel. Based on their origin, the fuels are classified into two categories, primary fuels and secondary fuels. Primary fuels, they are also called as natural fuel. Secondary fuel, they are also called as artificial fuels. Based on physical state, fuels are classified into solid, liquid, and gaseous fuels. These are the examples of fuel. Wood, peat, coal, lignite, these are the primary fuel which are solid in nature. Charcoal, coke, these are the secondary fuels which are solid in nature. Crude oil or petroleum, it is the primary fuel in the form of liquid. Petroleum, this word is Greek word which is derived from two words, petra and oleum. Petra means rock and oleum means oil. Means the oil which is derived from rock which is called as the crude oil. Then petrol, kerosene, diesel, synthetic fuel. These are the secondary fuel which are liquid in nature. Then natural fuel which is primary fuel which is in gas form. And the producer gas, biogas, LPG. These are the secondary fuels which are gases in gas in nature. Primary fuel is the fuel which is naturally occurring and secondary fuel, it is the artific artificially prepared from the primary fuel. Next, these are the characteristics of good fuel. Good fuel should have high calorific value. What is mean by calorific value? Calorific value, it is the total amount of heat liberated by complete combustion of unit mass of fuel. So, the good fuel should have high calorific value. Next, the good fuel should have the moderate ignition temperature. What is meant by ignition temperature? It is the temperature at which solid, liquid, gaseous fuel catches fire and burn continuously without further heat. So, good fuel should have the moderate ignition temperature. It should have low moisture content. It should contain low percentage of non-combustible matter. In case of solid fuel, the ash content should be less. It should be cheap and readily available in bulk at low cost. Product of combustion should not be harmful. The velocity of combustion should be moderate. It should be safe, convenient and economical for storage as well as transport. A good fuel should not liberate any polluting or poisonous gases. Now, the distinguish between solid, liquid and gaseous fuel. Solid fuels, they are solid in nature, liquid fuel, they are liquid in nature and gaseous fuel, they are gases in gas in nature. Then relative cost. Solid fuel, they are easily available with low cost. Liquid fuel, they are more costly than gaseous fuel, than solid fuel. 
and gases fuel they have the more cost than solid and liquid fuel next calorific value solid fuel fuels have low calorific value liquid fuels have high calorific value and gases fuels have the highest calorific value next space of storage solid fuels require large space for storage liquid fuels require less space than solid fuel and gases fuel require high space depending upon pressure next product of combustion solid fuel burn with ash and smoke liquid fuels burns without ash and smoke means they are ashless and smokeless gases fuel again they are ashless and smokeless next ignition temperature solid fuel have the high ignition temperature liquid fuels have the low ignition temperature and gases fuel they have the lowest ignition temperature next transportation storage and handling solid fuel they are easy to transport storage and handle liquid fuel they can be transported through pipes stored in container and risky to handle gases fuels they can be transported through leak proof pipes containers and risky to handle next risk of hazard in case of solid fuel there is a no risk of hazard in case of liquid fuel there is a risk of hazard and in case of gases fuel they are highly inflammable uh, so there is a danger of fire hazard next rate of combustion the solid fuel rate of combustion is slow and controllable in case of liquid fuel it is quick but controllable in case of gases fuel uh, yes it is quick and it can be controlled by air supply next uses solid fuel cannot be used in ic engine liquid fuel can be used in ic engine gases fuel can be used in ic engine next point it is the calorific value it is defined as the amount of heat liberated when unit mass of fuel is completely burned in air or oxygen the calorific value can be calculated in calorie per gram or kilo calorie per kg in case of solid and liquid fuel and gases fuel can be calculated by calorie per meter cube or joule per meter cube these are the units of solid liquid and gases fuel of calorific value next it is the gross or higher calorific value and net or lower calorific value this is the classification of calorific value or calorific value can be classified into two category first one is high calorific value and second one is net calorific value so first we'll see the high calorific value it is also called as gross calorific value it is defined as the amount of heat liberated when unit mass or volume of fuel is completely burned in air and the products of combustion are cooled at room temperature if the fuel has some oxygen it get combined with hydrogen from the same fuel and there is a formation of water this water is evaporated by taking heat from same combustion process if these water vapors are collected and cooled then there is a increase in calorific value the heat obtained by cooling water vapor is called as latent heat of condensation of water thus the calorific value includes the latent heat of water the formation of water can be represented as h2 plus o gives the h2o means if we consider the by weight 2 gram of hydro 2 gram of hydrogen get combined with 16 gram of oxygen to form the 18 gram of water means if we consider unit mass of hydrogen it get combined with 8 mass of oxygen to form the 9 mass of water molecule 
the above equation indicates one part of hydrogen combined with eight part of oxygen to form nine part of water by weight. The latent heat of unit mass of water is 587 calorie per gram or kilocalorie per kg. Therefore, the latent heat of water is 9 into percentage of hydrogen into 587 means 0 0.09 into hydrogen into 587. If we calculate the high calorific value, so we that value will include this latent heat of condensation of water. Net or low calorific value. It is defined as the total amount of heat produced when unit mass or volume of fuel is completely burned in air and the product of combustion are allowed to escape into the atmosphere. Means in case of net or low calorific value, we are not considering the product of combustion. Means latent heat of condensation of water. So in case of gross calorific value, it is equal to net calorific value plus latent heat of condensation of steam. And net calorific value can be calculated. That is net calorific value is equal to gross calorific value minus latent heat of condensation of steam. Thank you. If you like my video, then kindly subscribe for more videos. Thank you.